Hello everybody, my name is Kyle Gilroy, and today we'll be giving a short introduction to 3D DIC. I am part of uh, Vision Research's uh, Materials Analysis Division, and we're part of Amatech, and let's jump right into it. 3D Digital Image Correlation is essentially the utilization of a software capable of doing full field point recognition from images to generate color maps that display fields of displacement, strain, and or vibration. Uh, a basic example here is if you look at this rod, uh, okay, and, um, and you put some surface markers onto it, for example, those blue little circles. Uh, if you take that rod and you stretch it, what you'll see is after you stretch it, these dots will not only move from their initial position, but also their nearest neighbors will also move relative to one another. And based on how they move, you can actually calculate the displacement strain and or vibration of local areas on that sample. So a nice example is here is a cell phone being dropped. And you can see if you look pretty hard, you can see that there's a very fine speckle pattern on the surface. And if you look even closer, if I zoom in there, um, you'll see that they're well-defined little black dots that give a nice random high contrast pattern that is generally recommended that depending on your system, you want to have each speckle comprised of three to five pixels. And you also want to set your camera up so that you, you know, you, you really want to think about your exposure time to avoid any kind of motion blur. Digital image correlation has been used for a wide variety of applications. For the most part, what we've seen is that digital image correlation has been used in defense, aerospace, within the industry, and also all across academia. Now, some some examples here. If I show you, uh, this is a this is a uh, essentially a paintball gun that was marked up uh, using spray paint, and as you can see, it's a white background with black speckles. And basically, what we were showing is that when you fire the weapon, you can use digital image correlation to actually look at the stresses and strains across the weapon as it fires. Now the next area is the aerospace. Um, for a long time, the aerospace industry, for example, NASA, has been using uh, phantom high-speed uh, digital cameras to characterize uh, the strain and deformation of, um, for example, a helicopter on the left as it crash lands, and also you have a plane on the right and you can look at how the strain maps evolve during the crash. Now, we also do some work with industry. For example, um, we look at how devices um, basically undergo stress and strain as they're dropped. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, when you drop your cell phone, um, you know, there's a, a given scenario um, where basically if you impact your phone at, at the wrong angle or the wrong speed, it will lead to um, deformation and cracking. On the right hand side is a simple component test where we have a, a bearing that actually impacts a small component. And we also do some uh, academic work. On the right hand side, after the analysis, you can see that the color maps that are generated, which basically show where the stress and strain concentrations are, you can watch it as the video is being played back. Vision research is uh, basically trying to develop cameras to kind of meet the needs of a broad range of DIC users. So one of the things we're trying to do is basically uh, have really nice resolution flexibility. Um, and what I mean here, in, instead of temporal resolution, which, which is what you're used to with high-speed cameras, what we're referring to is spatial resolution. So that means basically how many speckles can you fit per unit area on your sample, right? And still fit the criteria for iDigs, right? Which is three to five pixels per uh, speckle, right? So as you can see on the right-hand side, you know, we have one megapixel all the way up to nine. And the way you should think about it is, you know, you're, you're gonna be able to roughly put, you know, almost an order of magnitude more speckles on your sample compared to an example of a one megapixel uh, sensor. And we're also very interested in, in, in giving you the best possible image, which is your noise floor, right? So we have, we have two things. One is the correlated double sampling, which um, we allow you to toggle on and off. Um, toggling it on will give you a nice 7.2 electrons for your read noise, whereas turning it off will give you around 20 electrons uh, read noise. And you basically play the game is, you know, do I want a better image or do I want to sacrifice uh, speed? Uh, we also have bright field mode, which allows you to adjust the full wall capacity of the pixels. 
Now, it's one thing to talk about the benefits of having a high spatial resolution. It's another thing to see it, right? So, so this is an example of uh, the Humvee tire accelerating. So in this case, just to show you, uh, let's say, for example, you wanted to look at the strain mapping at the uh, tire road interface. Looking at this, this basic video on the left-hand side there, um, you would think that you would need to relens the system, maybe switch cameras and so on. Uh, however, you know, with higher uh, spatial resolution, what you can do is just immediately uh, zoom in digitally to this image. And since you have already a really high spatial resolution, you can look, as you can see, the speckle pattern is, is pristine and it still obeys, um, you know, all the criteria necessary for a high quality digital image correlation analysis. Another, uh, another focus we're going in is basically optimizing the workflow for users using digital image correlation. So the first thing is, um, as I mentioned before, we, we like to give you the best possible image quality out of the camera first, right? So, so basically what that means is, you know, you have a really good dynamic range and you also have a really nice signal to noise ratio. And as you can see in the video on the top, you see, you know, maybe, maybe your, uh, to your taste, it's a little bit too dark. Okay. Um, what we do basically is we allow you to digitally enhance the image after you get the, you know, the best possible image to make it a little bit brighter. Um, but as you can see, even when you make it brighter, the image quality is still pristine. The next thing is we have an automatic way of, of triggering the camera. And this is all done in hardware as well on the sensor. So for example, when a bu bullet comes through your field of view, you can automatically trigger the camera within an inner frame time. We just came out with a really neat feature called S Sync Snapshot. And this is a, a basically a, a really refined way of doing calibration shots for, for digital image correlation. And at the same time, we have something called auto file naming to make it really convenient to automatically save your uh, TIFF stacks anywhere you want them to read into, you know, uh, maybe a third party software, if that's what you want to do. We have a feature called um, continuous recording. Uh, some people refer to it as buffer balancing. And what that is, is basically, if you can think about your RAM as a series of partitions, basically as you're filling the RAM, the previous partitions can be saving all, right? So. So as you continue to record through your different uh, your partitions, you can rapidly save the data and basically circle around if you need to to continue uh, saving through various partitions. Uh, very commonly used in the field. Uh, we also allow people to do direct saving to the Cinemag, which is a really nice way to uh, to optimize your workflow. Okay, and you can take out the city mag, save it off to your PC, more work, okay? Um, and we also have a, a download capability of doing 10G. Uh, 10G basically allows you to download, you know, roughly five to seven times faster than, than 1G. You know, for a normal laptop, downloading off these cameras is around 500 megabits per second on a standard laptop. Um, for, you know, for 10G to my laptop, for example, which is not special, my laptop is just a standard one you know, I can do uh, around four gigabits a second download to my PC, um, which, you know, saves a lot of time. And right at the back of the camera, you have programmable IOs where you can, you know, send a signal out of the back of your camera, for example, the strobe, the F-Sync, um, or for example, an IBAT signal, and you can filter, delay, or invert that sample. Um, or, you know, you can, you know, you can do all sorts of things to basically communicate with, uh, you know, peripheral devices, for example, lasers, you know, different machinery. You can have that camera kind of talk to that machine and control it. And we can also view signals directly in our software. Uh, and this can be done by uh, integrating it all with the data acquisition unit. And you can see the signals directly time correlated to your image. So you can basically visualize your trigger signals. Maybe you want to look at your strobe signals for the two master slave cameras while you're doing DIC. You know, the possibilities are pretty broad. That was a, a basic short introduction to uh, 3D digital image correlation. My name is Kyle. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're always looking for a challenge to solve, um, especially in the realm of, um, you know, 3D digital image correlation. Uh, as time goes on, you know, these, these applications are getting more and more interesting. So, you know, please don't hesitate to challenge us with, with what you got.
All right. Thank you. Bye.